go around using the technology of this world. The prince of the power of the airwaves. And everywhere you turn out there today, uh, you see people walking around with these little smartphones in their hands, little blackberries. And, uh, it's become the golden calf of today. Uh, right. That's right. And it's, it's, they don't own, nobody owns one, it owns them. They become so obsessed with these things constantly. I'll tell you what, I, mm. I get offended when uh, you're talking to somebody. Okay, look. And uh, they've got one of those things in their hand and they're not paying attention now. They just had a situation, <laughs> I just heard of a young woman who went in for a job interview and she didn't get the job interview, in fact she, the interview was cut short because she was texting during the job interview. You see? And, and that's what happens is they get to the point where they are so obsessed with those things, so controlled by those things. Remember when we went down to D.C. in that hot summer a couple years ago uh, when they had, uh, when Abomination, the man of sin, had to pass that law that no praying, no praying in the name of Jesus Christ in any of the parks. Or no, you couldn't, or you couldn't even mention Christ's name when you, when you did a funeral. Well, we decided that that wasn't for us, so we took about a dozen guys and we went to D.C. and met up with some other pastors down there. And we went right in front of the Capitol and prayed, didn't we? But while we were standing out there, you were, you were watching the people walking from one capital to the other, and you ought to have seen it. They were like, like mind numb zombies. Mm -hmm. Nobody was looking where they are. They all had one of these, and they always holding it out, and they were all looking at. They were walking by. Nobody was was talking to each other. Hmm. You know, anything could have been going on out there. I mean, they were missing. Th those things so have owned their mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, there might have been a tornado in the area. They wouldn't have seen it, okay? Could have been an eclipse taking place. They wouldn't have noticed it. The only thing, I mean, that they were aware of was is what was happening on that little, what do they call it, Blackberry smartphone? Android. Huh? Android smartphone. Androids, okay? <laughs> These people were, were so mind numb. And, and you see that even today, you, you could be standing out there, could be the, the prettiest sunset you ever saw. And, these kids would be like this, okay? Or it might be a, after a rain, there might be a beautiful rainbow, and they might be like this, totally oblivious. I might even be singing, and they could still be oblivious. <laughs> there you go. Got but anyhow, that got in going. But anyhow, this is what we're talking. Some of these devices today have the ability to record you now. In, uh, huh? All of them? All the phones. All well, you yeah. see, and so today, you have to be very, very careful because there are some people that like to record people without their permission, uh -oh. or they like to video people uh -oh. without their permission. Uh, if you can imagine anyone who was that way, right? But so listen, I'll tell you what. If, if I'm if I'm if, if I'm talking to somebody and they're holding, I, I guard my my speech. I won't talk to them, and I tell them, I don't, you know, if, if you're going to be there and have that thing, instead of paying attention to what I'm saying, I've got nothing to say. Right? Right. I mean, we've gotten to that point. You go into a restaurant, you'll see a whole family sitting at a table. They won't be talking. They'll be looking at those things. Yeah, right. And, and, and when they text now, you know, they do it in short words, instead of spelling out the whole yeah. word. I don't know how. So they're, they're forgetting how to use... The King's English, right. and and they starting to talk in these little sound bites, right? Well, that's what he's talking about. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. And Kevin and I recently visited some inmates, and. Uh, they were talking about, they were telling us how they think that they're being used as guinea pigs uh, in some kind of mind control in, in the prison. Now, uh, at, at first, uh, the one inmates had some delusions in the past, so I didn't put any stock into it, but all of a sudden they started giving you some details, and it kind of coincides with that situation they had in New Jersey where they had that billboard, and uh, 
they had these subliminal messages coming out and people would walk by, they showed you how it would work, where their subconscious could pick up on something and they would walk by and they would be saying a particular word and when the person would walk by down at the end of the cameras, that, that person would, without even their knowledge would be repeating that. And it's a mind control and this is what's taking place today. Where, you know, everywhere you go you see cameras up everywhere and uh, people are being recorded 24-7 now. I want you to go over to uh, Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that they, that that which may be known of God is manifest to them, for God has showed it unto them. Now, listen to this. For the invisible, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. That, that one verse right there describes about 90% of all of our university professors today. Amen. Okay? That, that one verse describes 100% of Obama's czars. And that verse describes most of all of Hollywood today. But he says, and, charged, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like to incorruptible men and the birds and four-footed beasts and creepy things. I want to go back to the, the word invisible thing. God created all of these things. God created, like we said, he, he created the radio waves. There's a lot of invisible things. There always has been. Now, radio waves, like microwaves or other things, uh, they don't have any intrinsic value. They could be used for good or for evil, like money or like fire. It can, you know, all of these things can be used for good or for evil. The only, the only intrinsic evil is Satan himself. Okay, that's where you have intrinsic right. evil. Well. God made these invisible things, and all around us, there are things happening that we cannot see, but it's there. It's happening, okay? There is spiritual warfare taking place around us all the time. Mm -hmm. Some of us can feel it, all right? Oh, yeah. Some of us, God has given at times the ability to, to sense it, to know something's not right here today, there's something wrong, now is a good time to leave, or it's a time to move. Right. And uh, throughout my life, I've, I've left places just at the right time, okay? Uh, and that's what's happening. There's a whole different realm of existence around us that most of us are uh, not aware of the vast majority of time. And this is why, you know, the, you have an enemy out there they don't really care much for you and like to do some very bad things to you. Mm -hmm. If it were not for the interventions, you have heavenly angels intervening on your behalf. Right. Well, I want to go over to, uh, and by the way, you know, this, I, I want to go to Isaiah chapter 14. In Isaiah chapter 14, Verses 12 through 16. Here we take a look at Lucifer. The word Lucifer means the shining, the shining one, shining one. And the word Satan, uh, the name of Satan means the adversary. And now this is a very familiar passage of scripture to a lot of you. And here we're going to see that Satan from the very go, wanted to be God. He wanted to be God. He wanted to replace God. 
And he says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Now, here, when he talks about this, the stars in heaven are always the angels. The clouds are always the saints of God. They are referred to as clouds. And obviously the Most High is God himself. And he says that, that he is going to. He said, I will set also as God. He's, gonna, he's got plans. He's going to sit on God's throne. He said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and that's a familiar passage to most of you because we often talk about how that word heights there in the Hebrew is Obama. It's spelled U-G-B-A-M-A -A in the Hebrew. And uh, it means the elevated one, the elevated one. There's two definitions. If you take the U-G off and just have Obama, it means the elevated place. Now that's got two definitions. The high elevated place is heaven itself. But that's used also, if you'll turn very quickly over to Ezekiel chapter 20. And in Ezekiel chapter 20 in, in verse 29, the secondary definition there, Ezekiel 20 and verse 29, Then I said unto them, Which is the high place whereunto you go? And the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel that saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit your whoredom after the abominations? I'm wondering if Netanyahu ever read this verse to Obama. <coughs> For whom you offer your gifts when you make your sons to pass through the fire. That means they sacrificed your children, folks, at this place, Bama. The children were sacrificed in the altar of Bama. And that's what we have today. We have the altar that the children are being sacrificed at is Bama. We go back to uh, verse 14 in Isaiah chapter 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, and did shake kingdoms? Now, in this passage of Scripture, in chapter 14, it starts out in verse 1, and here he is talking uh, to the prince here, the prince here of, of Babylon, but, and that simply means that he was one that was inhabited by, inhabited by Satan, one of Satan's children. But in verse uh, 12, it switches over to the king of Babylon, which is Satan himself. And then as we get to verse 17, we see a switch back to the person, the, the human being of, that is... Uh, actually inhabited by Satan. And he says, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that are open, not the house of the prisoners. And all the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of the grave like an abominable branch as the remnant of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword. And they go down into the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in the burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land, and slain thy people, and the seed of evildoers should never be around. Well, going back to uh, verse 16, where it says, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, consider is this the man saying that he made the earth to tremble in the kings. Well, there are honorable kings that have their place in burial. But he's telling you that when Satan ends up in hell. He's going to be in hell with all of those wicked, evil, dishonorable kings that we have today. And 
here again, Satan through technology, through technology today. Uh, he said he was going to be the most high. He wanted to be as God. Uh, he wanted to be omnipotent, meaning all-powerful. God is omnipotent, all-powerful. There is no limit to God's power. God is omniscient, all having all knowledge that uh, the past, the present, and the future. Now he said, well, that's really hard to, uh, to try to understand. Well, you know, Scripture says exactly that. God's ways is so much higher than ours. You know, we are not equipped in any way, shape, or form to try to understand. So God has all knowledge contained in him, the past, the present, and the future. Uh, he is omnipresent. It means uh, even David said, even if I, if I ascend to the pits of hell, God is there. No matter where you go, God is there. In fact, it's an interesting thing. The Bible says that when Satan and all of his generals, when his men of war, uh, when they convene there in Satan's pavilion, <coughs> guess who's sitting in on the, the planning meeting with them, right? See, that's, that's really hard to go to battle when the enemy's sitting in on the, the strategy, right? Amen. Sitting right there, knows it, right? Not only that, but boy, what an advantage when you know what, what your enemy's going to do long before the enemy knows it, right? Amen. And so, what has Satan, his plans are to do one thing, he's got to break the word of God. Now, the last thing that Satan wants to be is immutable. These are the attributes of God. God is immutable. It means that God changes not. God can't change. God can't change. He's the same today, tomorrow, forever. Amen. Amen. So, here he goes on, and he makes this point there. But through technology, through technology, folks, Satan can appear to be omnipresent, right? Mm -hmm. Look, you know, we, we hear all the time about these predator drones, and he... He sent out some esoteric messages, if you remember. Remember when I was telling telling you folks, uh, when he first made that statement uh, about those Jonas brothers, remember that? And I says, do you understand what he's doing? He's sending a message there to his people. Nothing happens in politics, and when you see these uh, press conferences on TV and that, there's nothing in there that is what appears to be. It's always going to be different. And, he, and when he made that statement that his, uh, his daughters uh, are really like the Jonas Brothers, but if, if you Jonas Brothers uh, have any designs of my daughters, just remember two words, predator drunk. He wasn't, it was supposed to be a ha-ha. He wasn't talking to the Jonas Brothers, folks. You understand who he was talking to? One of his heroes, Saul Linsky, said that said that necessarily, when the communists become in full power, when the Obama regime, if it overcomes the Constitution, if it overcomes the patriots, the American people, he said that necessarily there would have to be 25 million people. 25 million people would have to be eliminated. And those are what they call red list people. Those are people that, well, like me, People that are on that have a, a position where they get a message out, okay, and then they have the blue list and the yellow list, uh, and and what they want to do is reindoctrinate them. <coughs> but but the red list, twenty five million people, and I don't think and you know Obama has done everything according to the to the manual under communism, Amen. and so here now. You know, we're dealing with powers and principalities. Right. And through this technology, through the computer system, the satellites that are out there, Satan can appear to be everywhere. Right. He can appear to be, he can, he can appear to be all-knowing. And, you know, instead of reading the minds like these inmates were telling us, what they're doing is they're trying to implant thoughts in their minds. There's a lot of ways you can do that. As we know that 
Uh, indoctrination has been the, the primary goal of our universities now since the, the 50s. Uh, <coughs> I want to take you over to 1 Timothy. And in 1 Timothy chapter 3, Starting with verse 1, this is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good thing. Uh, today, just uh, in the past a couple, couple of years now, the amount of women in the pulpits, as we are in this apostasy, as this has increased just in the last couple of decades from about 2% now to about 15%. It's, it's re increasing rapidly. That is another one of the signs of the end times. Uh, the Bible makes it very, very clear. Women are not to be ordained ministers. They are not to be the pastors of churches. Amen. But And you'll notice something here, because this is kind of very plain here. Uh, this is a true saying. If a man, you see, mm -hmm. if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires the good work. A bishop must then be blameless, the husband of one wife. See, it used to be that uh, wives were always women, you see, and, and, and husbands were always men. That's the way it used to be, right? How many of you ever knew uh, growing up uh, husbands that weren't men and, and wives that weren't women? Right? And they, they were all that way today. Remember, the Antichrist system is what? Totally in opposition to what is normal and natural. Today they, they have what they call the same-sex mirage. And they have that uh, in place of natural. So whenever you're referring to, to that, always say natural marriage. Use the term. Mm. A bishop that must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. By the way, the word bishop, the word elder, the word pastor, the word shepherd, uh, they're all parson. They're all the same office, folks. Mm. Presbyter, they're all the same office. They're, they're not different. Okay? Mm. They're all the same office. Not given to wine, not a striker, not greedy, a filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler or covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Where'd Matthew go? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> for if a, if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Mm. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Here's the key word there. Mm. Not a novice. Right. Not a novice. Listen. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without lest he fall into the reproach of you know, the snare of the devil. He's not talking about those of without, he's not saying a good report of the world, but it's other congregations, other Christians out there have to have a good report. Amen. Now, you see what he's talking about here, when he's talking about a novice, one of the easiest things in the world, by the way, folks, that word devil means slanderer, slanderer. It's the easiest thing in the world is these young preachers, inexperienced young preachers, all it takes is the people to come and start flattering them, give them a flat. Boy, have you ever heard yourself preach? Do you know how, I'm going to tell you, you're way advanced in your years. You, you really know the word of God. I mean, you ought to be one of them big time TV preachers out there. You could be making a lot of money, you know. Now then, especially, uh, you know, when it's pretty young women that are flattering them. I mean, that really affects them even more out there. And that's what he's telling you, not novices. These young preachers are the easiest ones, but not just the preachers. New Christians. Right. New Christians. You know, often what happens is they'll get a little, a little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing oh, boy. in the wrong hand. You get 
just a little bit of knowledge can get yeah. you into a lot of trouble. Right. It can have you going around saying things and taking liberties with the Word of God. If there's anything you don't want to take liberties with, it's the Word of God. No, no, sir. You know? How do you know that? Well, God's Word, the Bible tells you, don't do it! Yeah. Amen. Don't, don't take liberties with the Word of God, right? Amen. Because if you do that, you will wish you hadn't done it. Okay? Amen. Exactly. It'll come back at you. Now, God is, is very, very merciful. I mean, really merciful. And he's long suffering, and he'll give you he'll give you a lot of room. Mm. But if you continue, oh boy, and you're not in repentance, Look out. then it's going to catch you, because he's not slack concerning your judgment. Amen. 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 I want to go over to First John. In first John chapter four. In first John chapter four. Beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits which they are of God, because many false prophets are going out of this world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now, now what we're talking about, he's not just saying that there are people that, that walk around and say, yeah, Jesus Christ come in the flesh. No, he's not telling you that that person is a person of God. The Spirit, that truth is of God. Now listen. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you know, you have heard that it should come, in, and even now already in the world. Now, there are a lot of those out there, the World National Council of Churches, a lot of these apostate churches tell you that that Jesus was a good man. He was a great, even the Muslims say he was the prophet of truth. Right? right. Then they go after, they, they say he was the prophet of truth, the man that told no lies. Then they say he wasn't the son of God. Well, that's Islam, right? Well, here, he said, now listen, this is verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Look, listen, pay close attention again. You are of God, little children. You have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. And boy, does it. I mean, the world just loves Hollywood. The world loves liberal. The world loves abomination. Right? We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Here's what he's telling you. He's telling you that, again, what I had said earlier. We have two very, very powerful, the ultimate powerful weapons, and that's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit has unlimited power, if you understand that, and the Word of God cannot be broken. You have something that cannot be broken, right? What is Satan's goal? To break the Word of God. And he's not going to do it, folks. Well, and that's what I want to end with today. Remember that. Listen, if you understand that he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world, then you can be unstoppable until the Lord takes you out of here. Amen. And this is the time. God has raised us up for this time. It's your time. It's your time. Amen. Some of us, you know, maybe tomorrow. The Lord may be calling you home tomorrow. He doesn't promise us another day. So we have to live every day like it's your last. Place up crowns in heaven while you can. Amen. 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 We've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 9975 Kinsman Road in Novelty, Ohio. And until next week, we want to say good morning, God bless. And remember, always, 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 let's do it. Keep fighting the fight.
You don't often hear anybody preaching about the devil today or hell. You know, they'll tell you often that that will not fill the offering plate. And, uh, oh, wow. Well. Yep. So, we're about to find out. I just preached that. We're about to take an offering. Uh, yeah. Do right. I have to take two? Gonna, huh? Do I have to take two? You might have to take two, yeah. Shake them down. Shake <laughs> them <laughs> down. Whatever it takes. Oh, to see for one of them. <laughs> oh, what was that preacher's name? I keep forgetting his name. The guy that used to, uh, what was his name that you used to preach? And used to, huh? I, Reverend Ike. Reverend Ike. Yeah. Yeah. I used to just sit up and laugh at this fellow and, uh, because he used to, and, and watch the people. He'd say out there, not all of us can live lavishly. Not all of us can live like kings. And I can for you. Not for me. I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for you. You send me your money. You can't go on a yacht, but I'll go there for you. You can't drive in a limousine, but I'll do it for you. Wow. And people would, would put that money up. What are you doing for me? Oh. You know, I mean, and that's. Yeah, you're saying you can't go to hell, but I'll go there for you. Yeah. That's the. That's the pastor. Yeah. Glad you said that, not me. <laughs> Folks, that's, that, that's an amazing thing, you know. You also used to say you can't lose with the stuff I use. Yeah. <laughs> T.D. T. D. Jake says, I want my stuff now. That, that's what that woman was saying this morning. She was going back and forth. Oh, you want your stuff now. All of you. You're going to get your stuff today, okay? Yeah. Totally. And they have no idea. No idea. Nothing. Amen. What do you have for us? 198 in the All American. 198 onward, Christian soldiers.